Welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show. Now in our first hour, we love to cover the Slam Dance Film Festival and all of their pieces. And I am thrilled to be sitting down with the co-founder and many call him the co-conspirator of Slam Dance, Paul Rackman. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Thanks for having me. So for people that are just sort of getting comfortable and acclimated with this, give us a little bit of the overview of the role Slam Dance plays in the industry. Well, this is our 23rd year and about 20 of us came up in 1995 with our own films. Um, you know, we didn't get into Sundance and we were like, you know, darn, let's just go up there as a group and as a force and just kind of start <laughs> showing our films. And we rented, you know, odd spaces at the Prospector in the Yarrow, you know, the ballroom or this little room in the hallway of the Prospector and we started showing our films. And more than anything, the uh, Hollywood and film press really fell in love with us. And it, you know, that was a time in the mid 90s when independent film was kind of being co-opted by bigger Hollywood studios. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Disney bought Miramax, Fox started Fox Searchlight. So all of a sudden, the true, true small independent film that even Sundance was founding was founded on was kind of getting edged out of the festival. So we kind of came in and filled that gap. And um, we really concentrate on first-time filmmakers, uh, you know, modest budgets, no distribution, first time out. And uh, we have about a dozen films in the documentary competition, a dozen films in the narrative competition, a whole bunch of shorts, and maybe 10 films out of competition that are maybe second or third time filmmakers. So a, a lot of time they're alumni who didn't get into Sundance a second time. Well, I love that though, because like so many of the best ideas, you got told no, and you decided to go off and do it yourself. Right, right, and you know, other other filmmakers had tried that before, but they'd come up with just their film and themselves, and we came up as Power a group. Power numbers. <laughs> Power numbers, and it was really, you know, we were helping each other, and that's kind of what we still do at Slam Dance, and all the filmmakers at Slam Dance end up helping each other, whether it's at the festival or after the festival. Well, and some of the alumni that have come out of Slam Dance, we were talking Christopher Nolan, Lena Dunham. I mean, really. Ben Zeitlin. These are uh, Oscar Lynn winners. Lynn Shelton. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, these are these are all great filmmakers. And um, you know, one of the thing one of the things that happens, uh, you know, that I also say when the filmmakers arrive is like, have a good time because a lot of those filmmakers, when I run into them or talk to them, one of the things they say is like, you know, I had a great time at Slam Dance. I have like great great memories from my first film because of Slam Dance. That's, you can't so ask for like much more than that. creating memories about your career, you know? Well, I have to ask now, you know, we're in the middle of the festival, and obviously it's a very supportive and independent community, but when you go out into the world, it seems like every other movie that comes out is a superhero or a comic or a sequel or all of these just really big budget films that, yeah. I don't know, on substantive levels, if they can quite measure up. How, where do you see the importance and the future of independent filmmaking? Well, that's a pretty broad question, but um, as far as, you know, what, what we like to find is, is individuality and uniqueness and originality. And, you know, finding a filmmaker you know, with their first film, a lot of times is about, okay, I have this great idea that maybe nobody else has, and I'm gonna try to make it. And if he succeeds, it, it, it'll show up at Slam Dance, sometimes Sundance. So that's what's hard to keep, I think, as you get further into the business, and you really want a career, and you go to Hollywood, then those ideas are sometimes viewed as less commercial. So, you know, both Slam Dance and Sundance really supports these original voices. And it's really hard to keep carrying on with that. Um, you, you know, you need talent, you need luck, you need connections, you need all these elements to make a film happen, particularly those kind of very unique original films that aren't just the formula that has worked the last time that is a sure bet to <laughs> work sure again. Bet, yeah. Because that's kind of what happens. Um, well, and uh, I love when, that Slam Dance doesn't make an artist sort of dilute their vision. No, no. I mean, we're, you know, we're, we're nurturing, you know, fresh filmmakers, <laughs> you know, and we're trying to support their, you know, their inner art you know, what they want to do. Well, you, you, you know? said it, it's a discovery fest. Yeah, it is. Like it's that. emerging filmmakers for the most part. It's finding, you know, a lot of times really Slam Dance, it's, it's looking at, you know, the film they have at Slam Dance might not be their big hit or might not be a breakout, but a lot of times it's going to be about what that filmmaker does next. I want to talk about the closing night film uh, for the festival. This one is After Adderall. Correct. The well, you tell me a little bit of the backstory. Well, of this after one. After Adder Adderall is a very small personal film again by Stephen Elliott, who's an award-winning, best-selling author. 
Um, of the Adderall Diaries. Of the Adderall yeah. Diaries, correct. So he became famous with the Adderall Diaries, and he had been familiar with, with Hollywood a little bit before and had been involved with you know other books and had a lot of friends and, and as filmmakers. But James Franco options the Adderall Diaries to make it into a movie, and he does. And during that process of the big movie, uh, Stephen Elliott kind of felt that he wasn't really treated right. He was kind of kept out of the process. They didn't want him involved. He felt a little bit on the outside. So, so his what, passion project, his yes, memoir, he was not he, a yeah, participant yeah, in the telling he, of that story. And he had no idea what they were going to do with his book. And he, he wasn't getting communicated with. And he was really on the outside. <laughs> so what does he do? He decides, he's an independent filmmaker. He's an independent <laughs> filmmaker. So he decides to make a movie about that experience. <laughs> And he makes this, uh, you know, low-budget movie. It has, you know, some pretty some some name actors showing up in in small parts. And it's the charm of the movie, though, is that it really is a quintessential. It feels and looks like a quintessential American independent film. It it has this feeling of fil a lot of films that were at Sundance and Slamdance in the '90s. It's very personal. It's black and white. It's um, quirky. And it's kind of off the off the cuff, <laughs> and 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 it's great because um, it's him getting back at 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 James Franco at James and Franco, company in yeah. a way, and uh, the, you know I, you know the, if you come and see the movie, we'll have a great Q and A with Stephen talking about this I experience because like it's almost like he could it. make another movie about <laughs> the making of the making of the second movie <laughs> and all, all right, the experiences well, we have a trailer. That. I want to show you <laughs> what we're talking about. This is after <laughs> Adderall. When I think of independent film, that's what I think of. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's very quintess you know, very American, very independent, and. Um, you know, the, Stephen Elliott is, is a fighter. He's he's not going to give up on his on his movie. He started his own little film festival in Los Angeles when it wasn't going into big festivals. Another person that heard a no, and he's like, exactly. nope, I'm going to do it myself. Ex ex exactly. And uh, we just thought it was a great way to close the festival. We felt that this was a film that was going to a lot of smaller regional festivals around the country, not mm -hmm. a big one. And we're like, oh, you know, it doesn't have to be a premiere to be at Slam Dance. Let's close the festival Let's with close it, the festival and, and, with and, it. And, and give it a leg up. And and uh, that's worked for us. We did that last year too. Well, and finally, I have to ask: Has there been any response from uh, from James Franco or Hollywood after this? No, not yet. He's been to Slam Dance a couple times with <laughs> other films, and um, you know they know it's here. And we'll see who shows up tonight. You know, there's a, a few of the actors. You know, Michael Hall's in this. James Urbaniak is in town. He's in this, and so they'll all be there tonight. And. Um, you know, uh, Stephen is good at, at rousing up a crowd and having an interesting screening, you know? And it's right before our awards. Tomorrow I can night. see it being a film about a film about oh, yeah, a film. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We could be yeah. back next year with exactly. this. But that's what makes it so much fun and so yeah. different than what people are used to with the mainstream. Yeah, and we're so happy to have it here in Park City, you know, in the whole big spotlight of Sundance and Slam Dance. And we, we didn't want this film to get forgotten. Well, Paul, I appreciate you being here, and I yeah. appreciate you continuing the work with Slam Dance. Yeah, thanks a lot. It's the Discovery Fest. It is, it is, and we're not going away as long as people will have us. I think it'll be here for a long time. We're going to take a quick break here on the Mountain Morning Show and be back with much more of our Slam Dance live coverage right here on Park City Television.